Witness, do you remember Hitler saying in his Reichstag speech on the 20th of February, 1938, National Socialism possesses Germany entirely and completely. There is no institution in this state which is not National Socialist. Do you remember these words or this? If you don't remember the exact words, you remember the sense of these words being stated by Hitler. Ich erinnere den Sinn, aber nicht die Worte. My Lord, the uh, extract from the speech is in uh, document book B, in document 2715, P.S. Do you agree with the sense of these words? Nein. Do you think uh, it was an exaggeration? Ich bin der Überzeugung, dass noch nicht alle Einrichtungen nationalsozialistisch waren. But uh, you would agree that the vast majority of institutions were national socialist. Sie waren im Begriff nationalsozialistisch zu werden, der Prozess war nicht beendet. <lacht> So you'd agree that what Hitler states as a fact was the aim for which he was working. Jawohl. And the method by which he was working for that aim was through the system of political leadership conducted by the leadership corps. Auf diesem Wege war das gesteckte Ziel nur, nur teilweise zu erreichen. But it was one essential method of possessing Germany in the sense of getting complete control of the minds and hearts and feelings of the population of Germany, was it not? Nein, nach meiner Auffassung nur ein Anfang. Only the beginning. But uh, that was the work which had gone on from 1933 up to 1938 when these words were spoken by Hitler. Das war ein Teil des Erfolges der Partei vor der Machtübernahme und nach der Machtübernahme. Let me just put... Uh, a few more words of Hitler's to show you how he expresses it. National Socialism, it's in the same speech, National Socialism has given the German people that leadership which, as a party, not only mobilizes the nation, but organizes it. Is Hitler correct in giving that description of the leadership? In etwa, yeah. Well, now, I just want to, to take the uh, matters which Dr. Servatius has re referred and ask you about the share of the leadership corps in them. Let's take the question of the Jews first. Speaking generally, and not with sole reference to your own Gau of Hamburg, did the political leadership take an active part in the demonstration of November 1938? Was ich von dieser Aktion erfahren habe aus den anderen Gauen, vermittelte mir den Eindruck, dass solche Aktionen stattgefunden hatten, aber keineswegs, dass von Ausnahmen abgesehen, 
die Träger der Aktion Politische Leiter waren. Well now, if you say that, will you look at Heydrich's order of the 10th of November? My Lord, your Lordship will find that on page 79 of uh, the document book 14. Oh, yes. My Lord, they, they should be, uh, the document books have been put in front. And uh, witness, I think you've... What stage? Uh, 79, my Lord. 96 uh, Witness, you'll find it at uh, page 96 of the German document book. If it isn't 96, it's 97. Have you found it? Well, you see, these, uh, this was an order from Heydrich issued at 1.20 in the morning of the 10th. And I just want you to look at paragraph 1. The chiefs of the state police or their deputies must get in telephonic contact with the political leaders. Gauleitung oder Kreisleitung, who have jurisdiction over their districts and have to arrange a joint meeting with the appropriate inspector or commander of the order police to discuss the organization of the demonstrations. At these discussions, the political leaders have to be informed that the German police has received from the Reichsführer SS and chief of the German police the following instructions in accordance with which the political leaders should adjust their own measures. Now, you remember the general instructions were as to the burning of synagogues, the arrest of 20,000 Jews to be taken to concentration camps, and the destruction or appropriation of Jewish property. What were the, their own measures? which the political leadership were to take with regard to that. Zunächst darf ich darauf aufmerksam machen, dass im deutschen Text dieses Dokuments die Stelle, die besagt, dass die Gauleiter richterliche Gewalt gehabt hätten, nicht enthalten ist. Ich finde sie nicht. Well, the point that I'm asking you about, we'll deal with that in a moment, but I want to know from you is what were their own measures which the political leaders were to adjust with regard to this attack on the Jews? Dazu kann ich Folgendes sagen. Ich selbst habe an der 9. November-Tagung des Jahres 38 nicht teilgenommen. Bin aus München über die beabsichtigte Aktion nicht unterrichtet worden. sondern erfuhr am Abend des 9. November vom damaligen Leiter der Hamburger Staatspolizei, dass eine solche Aktion bevorstünde. That is, the leader of the Hamburg State Police was carrying out the instructions of this paragraph and getting in touch with you. Well, now, what did... I'd, I have thought that you were able to speak for Gauleiters generally, apart from the Gau Hamburg, and I want you to tell the tribunal what were their own measures which the leadership of the party were to carry out. I mean, you must have heard it discussed afterwards. Tell us what they were. What were the leaders of the party to do? Der Ankläger hat mich in der vorletzten Frage über meine persönlichen Erfahrungen zum Ereignis gefragt. 
Dann glaubte ich, sie so schildern zu müssen. Ich selbst erfuhr vom Leiter der Staatspolizei, dass diese Aktion beabsichtigt sei. Ich habe den Befehl für den Gau Hamburg gegeben. Danach wurde ich ja gefragt hier, dass sofort durch Beamte der Staats- oder Kriminalpolizei die Geschäftsstraßen und Wohnviertel der Juden in Hamburg zu sichern seien. Ausgeführt hat polizeilich diese Maßnahme der Kriminalkommissar Wienke, dem ein Gauinspekteur zur Unterstützung von mir beigegeben war. Außerdem habe ich unverzüglich nach der Information durch die Staatspolizei die Kreisleiter angerufen und sie für die Verhinderung dieser Aktion in ihrem Gebiet verantwortlich gemacht. Now, did you in your Gau burn the synagogues? Nein. Ich habe I mean, when I say you, were the, I, meant, I, I want to be exact, were the synagogues burnt in Hamburg? That's what I should have asked you. In der ersten Nacht, das heißt vom 9. zum 10. sind aufgrund meiner Maßnahmen Ausschreitungen nicht vorgekommen. Es haben kleinere Ausschreitungen in unbedeutendem Maße in der Nacht vom 10. zum 11. stattgefunden. Und eine Synagoge in Hamburg ist gegen meine Maßnahmen, ich nehme an von auswärtigen Elementen, angezündet worden. Well, now, I think that over Germany generally, my memory is right, there were some, at least uh, 75 synagogues burnt. In general, apart from your own Gau, is it not right that following this order of Heydrich, the leadership corps cooperated with the police to see that synagogues and Jews, the synagogues were burnt, Jews were arrested, or Jewish property affected, and that non-Jewish property was left secure. Wasn't that the general task of the leadership corps to cooperate with the police in achieving that result? Mir ist kein Befehl und keine Anordnung bekannt, wonach das politische Leiterkorps auch außerhalb des Gaus Hamburg irgendwie befehlsgemäß verpflichtet war, an dieser Aktion teilzunehmen. Ich habe nur erfahren, dass im Anschluss an die Tagung des 9. November der Reichsminister Dr. Goebbels eine Aufforderung gegeben hat, die dann praktisch zu Ausschreitungen in einzelnen Gauen oder vielen Gauen geführt hat. Mir ist, mir ist weiter bekannt, dass der damalige Vorsitzende des Vierjahresplanes wenige Tage nach der Aktion auf einer Tagung in Berlin diese Maßnahme als nicht im Sinne des Führers und in seinem Sinne befindlich auf das Schärfste gegeißelt hat. Und bei dieser Tagung den Gau Hamburg als Ausnahme genannt hat. But you note, remember that you said a few moments ago to me that this was uh, an occurrence which only took place in individual instances. Here is the order of Heydrich telling the police generally to get in touch with the leadership corps 
so that they would cooperate with the police to carry out his orders, which were broadly, attack the Jews and see that you don't um, do any harm to non-Jews while you're doing it. It's quite wrong what you said a few moments ago, that this was an individual matter. The leadership corps were brought into this through the order of Heydrich, who was then Himmler's lieutenant, chief of the security police. Isn't that so? Nein, das ist nicht richtig. Das politische Leiterkorps hatte von Heydrich keinerlei Befehle entgegenzunehmen. Zuständig für die Befehlsgebung gegen pol an politische Leiter war ausschließlich der Gauleiter, der seine Weisungen vom Führer empfing. Oder vom Stellvertreter des Führers oder der Parteikanzlei. Well, do you remember what took place after that occurrence? Do you remember a meeting of the party court? Nein. Well, then let me remind you about the party court. Lord, your Lordship will find document 3063 at pages 81 to 88 of the same document book. Witness, it's page 105. <clears throat> you found the page, page 81. That, that is, you see, the, a meeting of the Supreme Party Court of the party, and it begins with a report about the events and judicial proceedings in connection with the anti-Semitic demonstrations of 9th November 1938. And if you look just after it says, in enclosure two, it reads, it was probably understood by all the party leaders present from the oral instructions of the Reich propaganda director that the party should not appear outwardly as the originator of the demonstrations, but in reality should organize and execute them. Instructions in this sense were telephoned immediately, thus a considerable time before transmission of the first teletype, to the bureaus of the districts, the GAUs, by a large part of the party members present. And if you would look on to the next paragraph but one, the, at the end of November 1938, the chief party court, through reports from several Gau courts, heard that these demonstrations of the 9th November 1938 had gone as far as plundering and killing of Jews to considerable extent and that they had already been the object of investigation by the police and the state prosecutor. And then, if you, after the, it says, the deputy of the Fuhrer agreed with the interpretation of the chief party court, transgression in any case should be investigated under the jurisdiction of the party. One, because of the obvious connection between the events to be judged and the instructions which Reich propaganda director, party member Dr. Goebbels, gave in the town hall at the social evening. Without investigation and evaluation of this connection, a just judgment did not appear possible. This investigation however, could not be left to innumerable state courts. And then paragraph two says that matters which concern the vital interests of the, the interests of the party um, should also um, receive party clarification first, and that the Fuhrer should be asked to cancel the proceedings in the state court. Now, if you look on, I don't want to take too much time, 
But you will see that there are then 16 cases which came up before the Supreme Party Court. And the first three cases are matters... Oh yes, I, there's just one point, uh, my lord, I should have drawn attention to. Just before you come to the first case, Gaul leaders and group leaders of the branches served as jurors at the trials and decisions. The decisions which for reasons to be discussed later contain in part only the statement of the facts are attached. Now the first three cases which uh, come from Essen and um, Niederwern and Linz are concerned with theft and rape and they are allowed to go on to the state courts. The next 13, which come from all over Germany, very different places, like you see Heilsberg, Dessau, Lesum, Bremen, Neidenberg, Eberstadt, Chemnitz, Aschaffenburg, Goestrin, Munich, all over Germany, there are 13 cases of murdering Jews. Two of these, of the perpetrators, get the very mild sentence of a warning and not being able to hold public office because of disciplinary violation. Um, and the remaining 11, the proceedings are suspended against them. Now, I just want you I don't, to look at 102. If you look at 6, that's the shooting of a Jewish couple called Goldberg. I suppose we're Mr. and Mrs. Goldberg. Number 7, shooting the Jew Rosenbaum and the Jewish Jewess Zwienicke. Number 10, shooting the Jewess Susan Stern. And there is the um, number five is the shooting of the 16-year-old Jew Herbert Stein. Now, do you, did you um, deal, you, you say that you didn't um, deal with any of these dis decisions yourself, is that so? Das habe ich ja klar ausgeführt, dass ich Gegenbefehle in meinem Bau yeah. gegeben hatte. Yes, well, now, I don't, I, it, I, I've asked you, as I said at the beginning, I want you to tell the tribunal about it generally, is how came it that the court of your party, which is supposed to deal with the discipline and decency of its members, passed over 13 cases of murder with two suspensions from public office for three years, and the remaining 11 cases with all action suspended. Don't you think that that was a disgraceful way to deal with murder? Ich darf zunächst Herrn, Herrn Ankläger antworten, dass unter den 13 Fällen, die hier zitiert worden sind, sich ein einziger politischer Leiter befindet. Well, actually, you're not, you're not right, you know. Cases 9 and 10 involve Orts Group in Leiter. Case 11 involves a Block Leiter. And I think the, it's true that cases 2 to 8, 12 and 15 involve people with various ranks in the SA. And cases 11, 14 and 16 involve people with ranks in the SS. But actually, I think you'll find that 9, 10... Um, and 11 involve the police, political leadership. But that's not my point, witness. My point is this. Here are these members of the party brought up before the court of the party. And the court of the party is condoning and conniving at murder. That's my point, and I want you to give your explanation of why you connive and condone at murder. Diese, dieses Dokument, das mir vorgelegt wird, 
habe ich erstmalig seit meiner Einlieferung hier als Zeuge im Justizpalast Nürnberg gesehen. Aufgrund meiner Einstellung zur Judenfrage und meiner Maßnahmen will ich unter keinen Umständen eine Erledigung der Fälle, wie sie hier angedeutet ist, und hätte sie nie gebilligt, wenn ich vorher davon erfahren hätte. But, uh, witness, if that's your personal view, um, uh, let us leave your personal view for the moment. The tribunal are considering the leadership core of the party. Here is the highest court of the party. If the highest court of the party gives decisions of that kind, of which you intensely disapprove, doesn't it show that the highest court of the party was rotten to its foundations? Das oberste Parteigericht hätte sich dem Führer gegenüber stark machen müssen, dass der Urheber dieser Aktion, der ja die ganzen Dinge ausgelöst hat, entsprechend, entsprechend den Konsequenzen, die entstanden sind, zur Rechenschaft gezogen wurde. Das hat das Parteigericht offenbar versäumt. Well, now, I want you, I'm not going to take it in complete detail, but I just want you to look at one paragraph of the explanation which the party court gave, gives. The, the full explanation is, is there, but it, on page 87, my lord, the second paragraph. Will you try and uh, turn over? I'm not quite sure whether it will be. It'll be a few pages on. 112, I think, witness. I just want you to try and help us on this point. The have you got a paragraph that begins, also in such cases as when Jews were killed without an order, in closures 13, 14, and 15, or contrary to orders, in closures 8 and 9? Now mark the next... Nein, ich habe den Would you try page 113? Sergeant Major, I'll help you. Jawohl. Do you see, also in such cases it begins, as when Jews were killed without an order. Enclosures 13, 14 and 15, or contrary to orders, enclosures 8 and 9, ignoble motives could not be determined. At heart, the men were convinced that they had done a service to their Führer and to the party. Therefore, exclusion from the party did not take place. The final aim of the proceedings executed and also the yardstick for critical examination must be according to the policy of the Supreme Party Court. On the one hand, to protect national socialist uh, attitude, to, to protect these party comrades who, motiv motivated by their decent national socialist attitude and initiative, had overshot their mark. And on the other hand, to draw a dividing line between the party and these elements who, for personal reasons, Lippert. Then there is a, a request by the public prosecution for action. Uh, in the next letter, there is a reference to this letter from the camp commandant uh, of Dachau, which shows that the request of, of the Oberstaatsanwalt arose from the impartial observance of his official duty. And then the file closes with this entry. Munich, the 27th September, 1934, public prosecution a letter from the Oberstaatsanwalt to the General Staatsanwalt at the Court of Appeal, Munich. Death of the prisoners in protective custody, Wilhelm Franz and Dr. Katz in the concentration camp of Dachau. I have stopped the proceedings as the investigations have not produced sufficient grounds for the assumption of outside guilt in the deaths of the two prisoners in protective custody. 
Well, now, witness, it's taken some time to read that document, but that is a characteristic illustration of the fact that the SA and SS abominations in the camps were protected by the highest authorities of the Third Reich. Is that not so? Ich muss zu diesem Dokument sagen, dass es aus dem Jahre 1933 stammt. Zu einer Zeit, wo das Konzentrationslager Dachau nicht ausschließlich von SS-Angehörigen besetzt gewesen ist. Aus diesem Dokument ergibt sich, dass seitens der Staatsanwaltschaft des Landgerichts München der begründete Verdacht vorhanden ist, dass einige Schutzhäftlinge gemordet worden sind. Are you suggesting that conditions improved after the SS men took complete charge of running the camps? Ich möchte dazu sagen, dass das Einzelfälle aus dem Jahre 1933 sind, die dieses Dokument beinhaltet, dass aus diesem Dokument aber nicht auf allgemeine Zustände in den Konzentrationslagern vor allem in den kommenden Jahren geschlossen werden kann. D did you know that the Waffen SS was making quite a profitable business out of killing people in concentration camps? Did you know that? Ich muss I want Did you know that? Nein. I want you to look at the document D960. Should be exhibit GB568. It's a very short document this one. It is from it is headed Waffen SS Natzweiler Concentration Camp, Commandant's Office, 24th March 1943, Concentration Camp Natzweiler. Bill, to the Security Police and SD Strasbourg, for the 20 prisoners executed and cremated in this concentration camp, costs amounting to 127 Reichsmarks, 5 Pfennigs arose. The Commandant's Office of the Natzweiler Concentration Camp requests the early dispatch of the above-mentioned sum. The tariff for, for killing was very low in, in Natzweiler, wasn't it? Six marks, 38 pfennigs for each dead man. Did you know that monies were being paid to the funds of the SS for, for activities of that kind? Nein, das geht nach meiner Auffassung aus dem Dokument auch gar nicht hervor. Die Konzentrationslagerkommandantur bezeichnet sich hier mit dem Dienststellen Waff äh, Dienststellenstempel Waffen-SS. Ich muss dabei auf das verweisen, was ich gestern gesagt habe. Dass der Be die Bezeichnung Waffen-SS insofern irrig ist, als das Konzentrationslagerwesen eine selbstständige polizeiliche Einrichtung war. Dieses Dokument scheint mir insofern meine Behauptungen zu unterstützen, als daraus hervorgeht, dass auch diese scheußliche Rechnung hier an die Sicherheitspolizei gerichtet ist. Also wieder an ein Exekutivorgan. Waffen ist es. Just, just a moment. Assuming that the security police paid this bill, where would the money have gone to? <coughs> to have gone back to Natzweiler, what would have happened to it? Would it have been credited to the funds of the Waffen SS or not? Die Kommandanturen der Konzentrationslager, zu denen auch Natzweiler gehört, 
haben ihre Abrechnung mit dem Reich getätigt und nicht mit der Waffen-SS. Ich kann dazu, wie dieses Geld verwendet worden ist und für welche Zwecke es ausgegeben war, keine Stellung nehmen. You have no, you have no knowledge of the financial arrangements of these camps vis-à-vis -vis the Waffen-SS, have you? If you haven't, that suffices for me for the moment. Nein. Nein. Ich weiß aus meiner Tätigkeit im Hauptamt des Essgericht auch einiges über die wirtschaftliche Unterstellung der Konzentrationslager. Und das, was diesen Punkt hier betrifft, weiß ich, nämlich, dass die Kommandanturen der Konzentrationslager ihre Kostenabrechnung direkt mit den Dienststellen des Deutschen Reiches vornahmen, nicht etwa verknüpft gewesen sind mit anderen Kassen oder Dienststellen der eigentlichen Waffen-SS. If you please, now you said in your testimony that the guards in concentration camps had not committed crimes, that whoever else was responsible, Pohl and one or two others, certainly it wasn't the SS guards. Were you serious when you said that with this? Um einen Irrtum zu vermeiden, Herr Ankläger, möchte ich hier richtigstellen, dass mit Wachmannschaften im Sinne meiner Ausführungen ausschließlich diejenigen Personen gemeint sind, die ein Konzentrationslager von außen her bewachen, im Gegensatz zu den Angehörigen der Konzentrationslager, die in den Kommandanturen und Kommandanturstäben vorhanden sind, die also den internen Betrieb der Lager bewachen. But, uh, but both, the, the, both those categories of guards were SS men, weren't they? Wie ich bereits gesagt habe, gehörten sie zu der sogenannten nominellen Waffen-SS, ohne mit dieser organisch etwas zu tun zu haben. Well, I, sh I, I shall return to that uh, point in a moment. First of all, I want you to look at the document D924. It will give you a picture uh, of the uh, humanity and ethical attitude of SS guards. I'm using a phrase which you used yourself vis-à-vis -vis the SS. It's GB 570, my lord. It's uh, a report this time from a Dutch source of the evacuation of the Remsdorf camp to Theresienstadt. Uh, the first page is a statement by Peter Langhorst, uh, who says, I'm an ex-political prisoner, and I have been detained in various prisons and concentration camps, finally in the Remsdorf camp. At the approach of the Allied armies, this camp was evacuated, and the prisoners, about 2,900 men, were put on transport from Remsdorf to Theresienstadt. Mostly these prisoners were Czechs, Poles, Russians, Hungarian Jews, while there were only a few Dutchmen among them. Of these prisoners, only some 500 men actually reached Theresienstadt. The others were simply killed off during the transport by the so-called shot in the neck. The corpses were thrown into mass graves, which were filled up afterwards. Then, I needn't trouble you with the rest of the statement, but you'll see a further statement with regard to that matter by Baron von Landswerder of Amsterdam, who was on this uh, transport, uh, who says that at the end of the second paragraph, on the 12th of November 1944, I was imprisoned in the concentration camp Remsdorf where I stayed until my escape on the 20th of April, 1945. At the approach of the Allied forces, the camp at Remsdorf was evacuated in great haste, and the political prisoners of this camp were transported to the Camp Theresienstadt. 
At first, the prisoners were transported by train and in goods vans. We arrived by train at Marienbad, where, for causes I do not know, we had a delay of about one week. The vans were the prisoners, were kept standing at the station. In the course of that week, Allied bombers attacked the Marienbad station, and in the confusion, some thousand prisoners escaped into the surrounding woods. Naturally, the entire local service, the SS, Volkssturm and Hitler Jugend, were set to work to recapture the escaped prisoners. And practically all prisoners, who of course wore their camp clothes and could easily be recognized, were recaptured. These prisoners, about a thousand men, were led back in groups to Marienbad Station. And there they were killed by the SS guards by a shot in the neck. As both engines of the train had been wrecked during the air attack, the prisoners had to walk all the way from Marienbad to Theresienstadt. Many among them were unable to go so far and fell down along the road totally exhausted. Without exception, these prisoners were murdered by the guards by a shot in the neck. That evening, their bodies were removed by lorry and buried in mass graves in the woods. And he says he thinks he could identify uh, where it was. I am fully prepared to assist in tracing them. When the transport started, I heard the SS guards saying that the total number of prisoners amounted to 2,775. Only some of these prisoners have reached Theresienstadt. The others were murdered during the transport. Near Lobositz, about seven kilometers, kilometers from Theresienstadt, I myself escaped. The leader of the transport was the SS Oberscharführer Schmidt, one of the henchmen of Buchenwald, who also behaved in a most scandalous way towards the prisoners and who was known to be a sadist. Do you still say that the SS guards betrayed the characteristics of decency? Ich möchte betonen, dass ich von den SS Wachmannschaften nicht behauptet habe, dass sie die charakteristischen Eigenschaften der SS-Angehörigen besäßen. Ich habe gesagt, dass unsere er Untersuchungen ergeben haben, dass der Verbrechenskomplex in den Konzentrationslagern von den Angehörigen der Kommandanturen begangen war und dass wir keinen Nachweis dafür gefunden haben, dass die Bewachungsmannschaften beteiligt waren. Well, now, let, me show you, let me show you another document, the document D959. It will be GB571, which is a report of the Ministry of the Interior of the Czechoslovak Republic. I want you to to turn to page three of the report. Crimes committed by the members of the Algemeiner SS and the Waffen SS. Mr. Owen Jones, the tribunal will take judicial notice of uh, the document which you were submitting under Article 21. Your Lordship, please. But they, uh, they don't think that you need deal with it at great length. Your Lordship, please. Then, my lord, the, the document D959 will be exhibit GB571. Witness, have you any knowledge of the part played by SS units in the arrest and ill treatment of the students of Prague in November the 17th, 1939? Nein, über diesen Fragenkomplex kann ich nicht aussagen weil mir die Tatsache der Teilnahme hier das erste Mal bekannt wird. 
you had no knowledge of the participation of the 6th SS Totenkopf Standarte in that matter, did you? I'm referring to an entry... Nein, hatte ich nicht. I'm referring, my lord, to an entry in a previous Czechoslovak report, USSR 60. You say you had no knowledge of that. Uh, this report... Nein, ich hatte keine Kenntnis. This report refers further to reprisal measures against civilians suspected of contact with the partisans in which the SS took part. Did you have any knowledge? Do you have any knowledge of SS troops taking part in reprisal measures against civilians? Ich kann insofern darüber aussagen, als mir bekannt ist, in welcher Art und Weise die Waffen SS eingesetzt war. Ich weiß, dass die Waffen SS und nur um die kann es sich hier handeln, an der Front kämpfte. I just want you to look at the last paragraph but one in paragraph two, page four of the exhibit D959. Page four, the par it's the fourth paragraph down in the English text. On May the 5th, 1945, after having plundered the village of Javorisko in the district of Litovel, the SS burnt it down. During this execution, the SS troops shot in the nape of the neck or killed in the burn burning houses all the male inhabitants of the village from the age of 15 to 17 years. Women with children, after having been ill-treated, were driven away. The execution at which 38 men lost their lives took place because the inhabitants of the village were suspected of hiding partisans. Have you any knowledge of that action or of actions of that kind that the SS took part in? Nein, solche Handlungen sind mir nicht bekannt geworden. Offensichtlich handelt es sich hier um den letzten Kampf um Prag. But then I want you to turn to some further evidence about the ill treatment by SS guards of transports of prisoners from concentration camps. Uh, the fifth paragraph on page five of the report. refers to 312 persons being beaten to death sh or shot or died, their body is buried in a coal pit and you'll see that it's stated that the, that the beatings and killings were done by SS guards. That's very much like the Dutch report, is it not? And then there follows in the last section, crimes committed during the Prague Revolution in May 1945, further accounts of SS atrocities. Now, witness, I want you to look at a new document, D878, which will be GB572, which is a report from the statistical, the Scientific Statistical Institute of the Reichsführer SS on the composition of the SS. I want you to look, if you will, at the third page of the photostat, the page marked page one. That sets out the I, I'm sorry, my lord, I haven't a translation of this, but I think that the entries will speak for themselves are quite clear. Uh, that is headed total strength of the SS on the, as on the 30th of June, 1944. You will see it, see it shows Algemeiner SS, ex, and the translation, I think, is excluding those members who at the moment are serving as reserves of the Waffen SS. Nicht einberufen, not called up, 66,614. 64,000. Uh, 64,000. Called up to the Wehrmacht, 115,908. Called up to the Labour Front, 722. In miscellaneous duties, 19,000. 
254, total of 200,498 of the Algemeine ASS. Now, can you tell the tribunal whether those not called up among the 64,000 odd were performing police duties, or were some of those performing police duties? Nach meiner Auffassung muss es sich bei den Zahlen, die hier in diesem Dokument angegeben sind, um die Angehörigen der allgemeinen SS handeln, die weder einberufen waren, noch sonstige Tätigkeiten ausübten. Also in der Heimat ihrem Zivilberuf, das heißt ihrem wirtschaftlichen Einsatz und so weiter nachgingen. The, the, the last category of 19.254 on miscellaneous duties were those the people who were forming the personnel of the Einsatzkommandos? Das ist vollkommen ausgeschlossen, denn das Personal der Einsatzkommandos bestand nur aus wenigen hundert Mann. Es muss unter dem Begriff des sonstigen Einsatzes hier irgendeine andere Funktion gemeint sein, die ich im Augenblick nicht übersehen kann. Well, now, you'll see that that page shows the total in the Waffen-SS of 594,443. Now I want you to turn to page 24 of this report. Uh, Mr. Irwin Jones, what's the final total described as? The, the total, SS total, 794,941. Yes, but what's the second German word there mean? Insgesamt. Yeah. Altogether, I think. If you turn to page 24, you will see that the that total of members of the Waffen-SS of 594,443 is divided up into various categories. There are first the Feldtruppenteiler, which are field units, 368,654. Then the next is, I understand, recruiting staff. 21,365. The next category, training and reserve, 127,643. Then schools, 10,822. Then other units and offices directly subordinate to SS leadership head office, 26,544. And then in the head office, 39,415, making the grand total of 594,443. Now, the, that entry of other un of 26,544 other units and offices directly subordinate to SS leadership head office. Who were those men? Did they provide the personnel of the Einsatzkommandos? Ich muss meine Antwort von gerade eben wiederholen. Um das Personal der Einsatzkommandos kann es sich bei dieser Zahl unter keinen Umständen handeln weil das Personal der Einsatzkommandos mit der SS an sich nichts zu tun hatte, sondern von den Dienststellen der Exekutive, vor allem auch von der Polizei gestellt wurden. Diese Zahl von 26.544 SS-Angehörigen müssen Angehörige von Dienststellen und Einheiten gewesen sein, die sich nicht in den Hauptämtern befanden, andererseits auch nicht an der Front kämpften, sondern sich im Reichsgebiet 
bei irgendwelchen... Now, witness, will you next turn to page 28 of this document, which shows how the 39,415 described on page 24 as being members of the head offices of the Waffen SS are employed. It starts SS head office 9,349. Waffen SS men engaged on in the SS economic admin and administration head office. Uh, I beg your pardon, the second one. Waffen SS men engaged in the RIS and resettlement office of the SS 2,689. That was the office headed by Himmler, which yesterday you said you said had nothing to do with the SS, with the Waffen SS at all. And then third is the SS Economic and Administration Head Office, WVHA, that is, is it not? 24,091 Waffen SS men. Personal staff of the Reichsführer SS, 673. SS Personnel Head Office, 170. Head Office SS Law Courts, 599. Office of the SS Obergruppenführer Heismeyer, 553. Reich Commissioner for Consolidation of German Folkdom, 304. Reich Commissioner for the consolidate Reich Commissioner for the Consolidation of German Folkdom, the Volksdeutsche Mittelsteller Office, 987, making a total of 39,415. Now, that makes it clear, does it not, that Waffen SS men were engaged in all this hideous network of Himmler's machinery of terror, wasn't it? Ich glaube nicht, dass das daraus hervorgeht. Ich habe gestern ausführlich dargestellt, dass die einzelnen Hauptämter kein einheitliches Oberkommando darstellten. Wenn hier zum Beispiel bei den verschiedenen Hauptämtern Angehörige der Waffen-SS erscheinen, so ist das darauf zurückzuführen, dass die dort diensttunten Personen in das Wehrverhältnis der Waffen-SS während des Krieges einberufen wurden, weil dadurch ihre UK-Stellung nicht notwendig wurde und sie so dem Zugriff der Wehrmacht entzogen werden konnten. All those, all those men were carried on the strength of the Waffen-SS, they, they were members of the Waffen-SS, they wore Waffen-SS uniforms and were paid by the Waffen-SS. That is so, is it not? Das ist wohl so. Das hat aber insofern eine andere Bedeutung, als sie damit nicht Mitglieder der Organisation, der gewachsenen Organisation waren, sondern wie das im Krieg vielfach der Fall war, einfach die Uniform angezogen bekamen und dementsprechend besoldet wurden. Wenn ich aus diesem Dokument Seite 28 beispielsweise das SS-Wirtschafts- und Verwaltungshauptamt nehme mit 24.091 angeb angeblichen Waffen-SS-Angehörigen, so muss ich hierzu sagen, dass es sich hier wohl ausschließlich um die Konzentrationslagerbewachungsmannschaften handeln kann und hieraus eben hervorgeht, dass diese Mannschaften als sogenannte nominelle Waffen-SS eben dem Wirtschafts- und Verwaltungshauptamt angehängt waren, aber mit der Waffen-SS in Wirklichkeit nichts zu tun hatten. If your lordship pleases, I submit the document speaks for itself and I have no further questions.